Well, here we are in chapter 11. Now, the good news is a lot of this chapter we have done before two times. Do you remember chapter 1? Clean out the fog. Go back to chapter 1. We dealt with the natural numbers. And we did a whole bunch of things with that. Then in chapter 2, we introduced the decimal numbers. So we went from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to all of the numbers in between the 1 and the 2 and so forth. Now we're going to finish up the number line. Finally in chapter 11. What is what's missing? What did we not cover? Well, we started at 0. We went 1. Da, 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 da. Yeah, the negative numbers. So chapter 11 is integers. Integers include the negative numbers. We're going to start out by comparing or comparing, if you want to mispronounce it. And it gives you a, a chart at the beginning of the section, and it shows you record temperatures in the United States, the lowest and the highest temperature. We would not have been talking about the lowest temperature because it is a negative. It is below zero, almost negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That is cold. Now, I went back and grabbed what I had on my computer here, the temperatures. This is our coldest temperature in each year. Okay, <laughs> this is Greenville, okay? We had a 7 in 2014. Now, I went ahead and I took those data, that data, and I averaged it up. There's our mean is 16. Put them in order. There's our median of 17. Our mode, of course, duh. Now, there's four of them. That's 17. There's the lower quartile, the upper quartile, and that's our, this is the end of it. That's our box and whisker. So, I just thought I'd throw some of that stuff back at you from the past chapter. So let's get on to dealing with our negative numbers. Numbers that are less than zero. Now you had that temperature of negative 79.8 degrees. That is negative 79 and 8 tenths. That's our formal way. I read it as 0.8. That's kind of a slangy way it's supposed to be, and, because the decimal point, and then there's an 8 in the tenths category. So we did that in chapter 2, 79 and 8 tenths. Now it's negative 79 and 8 tenths. What's the difference? It's on the opposite side of 0. I mean, when you look at the number line, what do you have? You've got the negative integers, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Okay, you've got the positive integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, I'm going to show you this, and you'll probably think, huh? But I have seen it, and I've not just seen it once, so I want to be sure and show you this. When you draw a number line, sometimes this happens. You go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you go over to the left. And I know this is going to sound weird, but I've seen it. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Because you're so used to 1, 2, 3, 4 going that way that you keep it going in the same order on the left side. No, can you see how this is one unit to the right? So this is one unit to the left. You wouldn't use a negative 4. 2 and 2 and so on. So uh, I, I know you probably didn't do it, but there's sometimes when it happens that way, and I don't want you to be doing that. Um, there is a question that comes up with where we put the decimal point and how do we do that in between. We'll, sh we'll see that a little bit later. Let's locate, this is uh, example 1, negative 4. 0 and 2 on the number line. Okay, negative 4, there's our 0, there's our negative 4, and there's our 2 on the number line. Negative 4 is 4 units to the left of 0. 0 is our starting point. 2 is 2 units to the right of 0. 
Okay, that, that should not be a problem for you. You should have seen number lines with negative numbers before. Opposites. Two numbers are opposites if they are the same distance from zero on the number line, but in the opposite direction. Well, I showed that to you just a minute ago when I went 1 and negative 1, 2 and negative 2. Those are opposites because they are the same distance from zero, but in the opposite direction. What do you think of when you think of opposites? You think of light and dark, uh, strong and weak, big and small. They're always as far apart from each other as you can get. So on the number line, you have your positive numbers going to your right and your negative numbers going to your left. So they are as far apart as they can get. They are opposites. 7, negative 7. Okay. What is the opposite of negative 5? Well, negative 5 is 5 units to the left. So 5 is 5 units to the right. Isn't that as far away as you can get from negative 5? Well, I know that negative 6 is further, but we're asking for the opposite. So it has to be the same distance, just in the opposite direction. So we can't use negative 6. I know that's further. But going opposite, negative 5 and 5. Okay, you have some problems for your first skill check. You are to put these numbers on the same integers on the same number line, 4. And then the second problem asks for number negative 6. And skill check number 3 is negative 1. So you just simply put them on the number line. Then on number 4, you are to write the opposite of each integer. So what is that going to be? Yeah, negative. 6,040. We start out with a positive, we end up with a negative. If we start out with a negative 6, we end up with a positive 6. So it, it's that simple. There's nothing else to it. Okay. Here is the definition of integers. Integers consist of the whole numbers and their opposites. Now let's go back. I mentioned chapter 1 and chapter 2. Okay, in chapter 1 we had the natural numbers and they were 1, 2, 3, and so on. We had the whole numbers which were 0, 1, 2, and so on. So if we take the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's this. So here's the natural numbers. I look like that because it's going on. Okay. And their opposites. Do we have all of the integers? No. What do we need? Well, we need the 0. So if we take the whole numbers, well, that would be from here and uh, going to the right, and then from here and going to the right. Well, the 0 would be kind of included twice. Um, that really doesn't matter because technically, what's the opposite of 0? Itself. So, you know, if you have 1, the opposite is negative 1. When you have 0 included with um, your the, the positive, the whole numbers, then putting 0 in with the opposites to get the integers is not an issue. We don't have a problem. So we say the whole numbers and their opposites gives you the set of the integers. The point is it's every single digit all the way across the number line from positive infinity to negative infinity, all the way across. Every number, not decimals, we're just talking about the whole numbers, 
and their opposite. So what I'm saying is the natural numbers, that's the same as the positive integers. Negative integers, they're the opposites of the natural numb's. So you, it, it said integers consist of the whole numbers and their opposites. You could say integers consist of the natural numbers and their opposites and zero. And that would be okay. So you could define it either way. It is not a problem. We just need to get every single from, you know, say 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? And continue it on. We want all of those numbers, everything in there from negative 5 to 5, including to 0. Okay. We're looking at this problem, and it says comparing these, 5 and negative 7. How do we compare them? Okay, well, what we have to do, when 1 is positive and 1 is negative, then we just put them on the number line. Okay, here's the negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, now remember... Left means less, let me say, less than. So, this is less than that, or turn it around. The 5 is greater than negative 7. Now, any time you have, I'll put the positive in there, a positive and a negative, the positive is always going to be greater. Okay. That's, that's obvious because the positive is to the right of 0, the negative is to the left of 0, so the negative is going to be less than, the positive is going to be greater. But what do you do when uh, you have this one where they're both negative? Okay, I have negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The negative 8 is to the left of negative 3, so it is less than. So if both of the numbers are negative, then you visualize them on the number line, remembering that less than is to the left. What about 10 and negative 1? Well, the 10 is a positive number, so it is greater than any negative number. Negative 5 and negative 2. The 5 is further to the left. The negative 5 is less than negative 2. Now, when we get to numbers like this, do you really want to... 100, 200, no. So, how do you deal with that? You say, okay, I've gone 237 steps to the left. I've gone more step. What is it? 293 steps to the left. So just generally, you don't actually count them out. Okay, here's that. that. Yep, that's further to the left. The negative 293 is further to the left than negative 237. So the negative 237 is going to be greater than negative 293. Now this next one here is the one that can give students a problem. Well, I mentioned that when we start out with a temperature of the negative 79.8 in minute. Where is that exactly? I have negative 237.1. So imagine I have my number line and there's negative 237. Where do I put this? Does it go on this side or that side Okay, of the 237? Which place does it go? Well, think about what that's telling you. Negative 1 means 1 unit to the left. Negative 2 is 2 units to the left. So negative one point something is between negative one and negative two, right? So here's a zero, there's your negative one, there's your negative two, negative one and a half. 
So when the number, it, forget about the negative for a minute. When the number gets bigger, when I go from one to one and a half, then that means I'm moving more, whichever direction. Okay, when you go from, forget about the negative, we go from zero to one, and I go from zero to one and a half, I move further. Zero to one and three quarters, I'm moving further. Zero to two, two and a half, three. So I'm moving in the right direction by the, not left, but right, not correct direction, the moving to the right. And I add that fraction, that decimal in there. Okay, I'm continuing to move, not to the next whole number, or natural number if you prefer, but part way. I'm still moving to the right. Same thing here. I have negative 237.1. I've gone 237 units to the left. I want to go a little bit more to the left. So the negative 237.1 is here. It is to the left of negative 237. I have seen it more than I want to believe where students will go negative 237 and then boop, they go. No, what you've done by moving that one tenth is you went backwards, so you're not 237 to the left, you are at negative 236.9. So be sure to keep going in the same direction, and when you get that decimal part of it, it goes on the other side. So the negative point somethings, they're to the left of that whole number, always, without exception. Time for you to do some problems on the skill check. Negative 5 is greater than negative 9 because it is to the right of negative 9 on the number line. Negative 4, less than 1 because 1's a negative and 1's a positive. Negative 20 is to the left of negative 10 on the number line. It is less than. Now, we're to put these four numbers in order. Remember, when we do that, we always look for the smallest, the one that's coming first, that's there, and the largest, that's the one that's coming last. So we have a negative 8 and 4 on the left and the right. Oh, well, the negative 2 would be next, uh, and then the 0, I'm sorry, the 0 would be next, and then the 4. Yep, so the negative 8, then the negative 2, then the 0, and then the 4. So there's our first and our last, and we put the negative 2 and the 0 in the proper place in between. Uh, the same thing here, you would have the negative 9 first, the 5 goes last on the, on the right, and then negative 6, a negative 1, and 2 going in that order in between. Okay. That's our introduction to integers as far as what they are, where they are in the number line, how you graph them, how you order them, how you compare them, in other words.